G'day, it's Joel Rasmussen for Southern Cross Combat here, and I'm backstage at the Hex 29 weigh-ins, talking to the man who is still the eternal lightweight champion, I'm talking to Mr. Quillen Salco. Quillen, thank you so much for the time. How is it to be in Melbourne? Hey, Joel. Yeah, it's good. It's good. I like to come over for the fight shows and watch my teammates compete, so I'm, yeah, very excited to watch, you know, Cody Haddon put on a show tomorrow night. Definitely not the same weather as in Perth. I was just there. It was a lot warmer. I'm sorry that it's, it's so cold and rainy, but we're happy to have you uh, nonetheless. How is it watching teammates compete? Yeah, it's good. Obviously, I still get, uh, still get nervous for them, but, um, you know, I have a lot of confidence in my teammates, so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm certain that um, Cody's going to get the job done tomorrow. So we spoke uh, before before you uh, you retained your belt, and uh, you talked about going into that fight. We talked about evolution as a fighter, both in yourself and Dom, and then you pick up a near identical uh, a near identical finish. I, I'm sure you're itching to tell me, so I will say it quicker than last time. Second round this time. First off, how happy are you that you got it done quicker this time? Yeah, over the moon. It just goes to show that uh, you know the past year up, we're gonna see who's improved more. It's yeah, that's proof that I've improved. Yeah, a lot more than, than Dom has. Is it a weird feeling of, like, deja vu, almost, to be not only in there with a guy again, but to then pick up the finish in, like, a very similar way? Not really. Obviously, this is my first uh, rematch with someone, but, um, you know, it kind of, you know, still felt like a, a new opponent. Because, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure. It's a... It's a it, 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 can't, it feels the same as if it was someone new, like not really deja vu, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to get it done in the, the exact same way. It's just, uh, I don't know, it adds a little bit of injury to insult, I think. Um, now, uh, we talked about the moustache uh, the last time we spoke to each other, something that I didn't bring up the first time I talked to you because I thought heaps of people would talk about it. I saw some photos. People had like cardboard cutouts of the moustache. What was going on with that? Yeah, we're giving out moustaches to everyone. That was a... Uh, an actual uh, like replica of my mustache. So Jasmine took a photo, <laughs> took a photo, and it got yeah. And we printed out um, the exact like copy, pretty much. And then um yeah, everyone was in the in the crowd was wearing yeah my mustache, you know, just uh, yeah, just something fun, you know, trademarking the mustache. Absolutely, you got to you got to embrace it. Jasmine is obviously one uh, one hell of a manager. That's absolutely fantastic. Whose idea was that? That was my idea, you know, I come up with that, yeah. <laughs> but as soon as I told Jazz, she was onto it straight away, yeah. It was like, she, the second I told her, she took a photo, and then she was, yeah, she was onto it. Yeah. What, what, where did that idea come from? I don't know, mate. Just off the top of the head, I was like, that would be, I thought that would be quite funny to have in, you know. I just wanted <laughs> Dom to walk out and just see everyone with mustaches. <laughs> All right, that, that, that was my main, that was my main idea. <laughs> Is, was that, I, I understand for Dom that must be intimidating, was that weird for you to see everyone with your moustache? No, nah, it, uh, it was a good, <laughs> it was good seeing that, you know, especially when at the end I see the ring girls have it as well, so I was like, yeah, that's, uh, that's hell cool, love that. <laughs> is there a spare one of those around? Did you maybe bring one with you? Could I please have one? Oh, mate, you've got to pay for that, I think oh. now, I think it's, uh, <laughs> nah, um, I think we've got a few made up, but we might, uh, you know, make some more up and... Maybe even sell them for, for a few bucks, make some bit of coin, man. That could be that could be a good idea. The next time I'm in town, I'll try to grab one off you when I'm in, when you're in Perth. Uh, you uh, at at the end of that fight, you made a very pretty obvious uh, hand gesture there. You know, I, I understand what the message is, and we spoke about it. But still, what is next? Man, I want the UFC next. You know, I'm I'm ready for that next step. I know. Yeah, with my skills, I'm ready to take on you know anyone at that level at any time. You know, they call me. You know, day, night, whatever week's notice, you know, I'm, I'm ready to step in there. Uh, obviously, you'd like, uh, I'm sure you'd like to just go straight into the UFC, but you are on that road to the UFC spot. At this point, how do you, are you, are you still thinking contender or you think you're ready to just go straight in? I know I'm ready to go straight in, but um, I, you know, with the way things gone with other Aussie fighters getting in there, it seems to be uh, the contender series has been the, you know, the path. So that's kind of what I'm expecting, uh, yeah, before I actually get straight in there. And now we talked a lot about you maturing as a fighter. And when we spoke to her, you talked about, not this last fight, but the one before that, you talked about you felt more mature in there. You could literally feel it. Uh, that first round uh, with Dom was, it was an intense round for you. But at least from my perspective, you didn't seem overwhelmed. You seemed kind of calm in there. How was that first round? Yeah, I just being stuck on my back. I was it was 
a little bit frustrating, but uh, I, you know, I did stay calm and composed. And the main thing what was going through my mind is not overexerting myself. You know, I know those, you know, five rounds is a long time in there, especially, you know, if you're doing dumb stuff like really trying to explode to escape. You know, when you really don't don't have to and. And I do respect Dom's uh, grappling game and submission game, so I didn't want to just turn and give up my back, you know, unnecessarily, especially that early in the fight when we're dry and sticky, you know. Uh, very hard to slip out of stuff that early. So I was just pretty much buying my time. And at the same time, I was, I was hearing, like, Dom's breath, and it was it was quite staggered. Like, it was, it was like I was overly excited. And uh, I knew that he'd probably, you know, fade away and... And get tired, and I, I think that's what happened. I think towards the end of the first round, he kind of like had a bit of an adrenaline dump. You know, that's a very high pressure situation, not just fighting, but like you know, a title fight. I think it. I think the pressure got to him in that fight, and I think that's why in the second round, I just kind of you know, steamrolled him. We spoke about you wanting to maintain you, that 100% finish rate, and then you being bummed that it didn't get maintained. But to now come back and then get that finish, how good did that feel? Yeah, it felt. Yeah, it feels yeah, real good to get back into the the finish column, you know, so, um, but saying that, having that five round experience is, uh, yeah, very valuable. That's 25 minutes I've, I've been in there, um, longest I've ever competed for and probably, the, yeah, the longest I'll ever have to compete for. So, yeah, it was good experience. Mr. Sal Kirtle, I appreciate your time. I know you're a very, very busy man. So thank you for talking to me today. It's always a pleasure to see you. Thank you, Joel. Thanks for having me on. Thank you so much.